Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer and this is Outer Wild. And something I regretfully ignored in my initial playthrough of the game is actually the Harthians. I finished the entire game without ever having talked to Chert, which is horrible because they are a really cool character. So I thought I'd dedicate a video to some of the more unique dialogue the Harthians have for the people who may have skipped over it like I did. There's some interesting conversations we can have after finding or doing certain things in the game, so let's get to it. And as always, this video will contain spoilers for Outer Wilds. I suppose it makes sense to start with the first character you see in the game. Slate is the engineer and builder of your spaceship and the little scout. So after experiencing certain ways to die, we can come back to Slate and complain to them about our woes. The first thing we can complain about is us being in a time loop. We can say, hey Slate, you're lucky we are in a time loop or otherwise we would be dead right now. And Slate responds, well, yeah, you're pretty lucky we don't have you grounded for medical reasons because I have no idea what you're talking about. Which is actually kind of reasonable to be honest. Next up, we can tell Slate that our ship's autopilot feature flew us directly into the sun. And they responded by asking us, had an exciting dream, did we? It's not exactly impossible for the autopilot to get you too close to the sun, but it's not like it'll try to take you there on purpose. Just make sure the sun isn't between you and your destination, and you should be fine. They do have a bit of a point there. Complaining that we keep getting killed by ghost matter results in a bit of frustration from Slate. Not if you use your scout to detect it, you won't, you dumb idiot. Did you think I made that thing just so you can take pretty little pictures of trees? It has multiple uses. You do know you can use it as a light source, right? Stars above, please tell me you knew that. Damn, Slate, tell us how you really feel. And finally, telling Slate about the supernova does not impress or worry our friend in the slightest. Slate tells us they already know about that. Oh yeah, the observatory has an exhibit about that. Between you and me, I sort of glossed over some of the finer details. Astrophysics really is more of Hornfell's domain. I imagine the hatchling ends their conversation with Slate by bashing their head off the nearest hard object. We will stay on Timber Hearth and track down Tektite. They mention that they are going to ask someone to drag a scout launcher all the way from home down here to this crater to see what's inside this seed. But if we just shoot our scout inside, we can tell Tektite what we found. They seem pretty annoyed by the info. You did, did you? And you're telling me it's bigger on the inside than the outside? Hmm. <laughs> this is going to be a chore to chop up, and no mistake. Can we even remove a seed that doesn't have the decency to stay the same size all the way through? Maybe I'd better grab another axe or three, just in case. To be honest, it's probably best this never gets around to happening because a friendly feldspar is hanging out inside this seed at this very moment. Next up, we will visit everyone's favorite time buddy. The developers have added something pretty cool for anyone that decided to visit Gabbro during the first three loops that we experience. If we don't visit Gabbro on the first few loops, they just sort of spill out everything about the statues, their memories, and how they are dying when we first meet. But if we visit them during the first loop, we can have a pretty interesting conversation. Nice, it's you. Good to see you've made it here in one piece. The first solo launch is a doozy, isn't it? So hey, don't laugh, but I think I might have had, like, some kind of spiritual experience with a rock shaped like a face. One of the islands on Giant's Deep has a Nomai statue on the beach. Ever seen one? I brought one back to Timber Hearth with me. Big stone sculpture of a Nomai's head, three eyes and everything. Beautifully carved, too. So one minute, I'm standing on an island, looking at a Nomai sculpture on the beach, and the next thing I know, it's looking back at me, glowing. The sculpture replays everything I've just done, like it's been watching me through my own eyes, you know? And then suddenly, it stops, and everything's normal again. Finally, we are able to respond to Gabbro, and tell them that we've had the same experience at the observatory. Then, they're off to the races again. You too, huh? It didn't seem bad, just... Weird. Were we the only ones who saw that happen? I tried radioing Hornfells and asking them about it, but they told me I must have just nodded off out here and gotten confused. Then we talked about dreams until Hornfells told me to go refill my oxygen tank before I talk myself to death. So that's what's new with me. But hey, this is your first solo voyage. Let's talk about you, you know? Since we caught Gabbro before his first death, we can just talk to them basically about the statue activation instead of the whole shebang. 
And we can even visit them in the next loop to talk to them before they formulate a theory about what's happening here. During the second loop, they just get right off into it by saying, Okay, here's a weird one for you. I think I might have just, like, died? Somehow? I radioed Hornfels at the observatory to ask them about it, but they're convinced I fell asleep out here and had a nightmare or something. Do you remember, you know, dying a few minutes ago? Maybe? We can reassure Gabbro that they aren't just going insane and tell them, Oh yeah, we definitely died. We get a classic Gab response. Okay, cool, that's what I thought. It was all way too vivid to be a dream. I radioed Hornfels again to see if they had died too, but I'm pretty sure they thought I was being metaphorical. Well, if you remember dying, then I guess I didn't just fall asleep and have a weird dream or something, but stars above, what's going on then? And then there was that thing with the know my statue earlier. Come to think of it, when I died, I saw what I'm pretty sure were my memories going backwards, just like the time with that statue. Do you think the know my statues are related to us dying somehow? So we died, but aren't dead? That's unusual for Harthians. I'm going to need to do some serious thinking before I come up with any theories. Maybe I'll have figured something out by the next time you come by. As a little bonus, if we talk to them again after that, they say, Hey time pal, nice weather we are having, huh? Wait, have I used that one before? And finally, we can get the last unique dialogue related to the loops after we die again. This time, Gabbro seems happy to see us. I was hoping you'd be back. Something really weird is going on. We can either ask or tell Gabbro. Do you think we are in a time loop? They answer, yeah, a time loop makes the most sense, right? Or at least, it's some kind of fidgety time business. Hard to say what's happening to the shape of time exactly, but let's go with a loop for now. So, it looks like you and I are the only ones who know we're in a time loop, and even if you tell them about it, no one remembers by the next loop. What's with that? Maybe it's because we both made some seriously intense eye contact with the Know My statue? I'm seeing my memories replay each time I die, just like I did when the Know My statue on the beach opened its eyes and looked at me. So, maybe, no glowing statue, no time loop awareness? I think that's going to be my leading theory, but if you find out anything about the statues or the time loop, let me know, okay? I'll be here. I think it's pretty neat the devs added this. It's just a really cool note to detail because, you know, Gabbro wouldn't have been through it all on the first loop. And Gabbro is our time buddy, we do have a special bond with him, so it to experience this initial phase of the time loop with a friend that understands what's actually happening to us is sort of meaningful and interesting. But this isn't all the unlockable text that Gabbro has. We can make some discoveries about the solar system and come back to talk to them about them. They start the conversation off by telling us a few loops back, the island got launched to space, and Gabbro died during the fall, which was pretty unpleasant. Then we have to prompt the conversation by telling them that we found their quantum poem. They say, oh yeah, the one in the woods. I remember writing that. Pretty fun, right? It works out to be a good 24 poems. When I'm done exploring, I want to make some more quantum art. Maybe some kind of creature sculpture that just, like, shows up while your back is turned and scares the daylights out of you. And Gabbro is evil confirmed. Next up, we can tell them that we found out what happened to the orbital probe cannon. And we get another classic Gabbro response. Whoa! That's the cannon breaking apart at the start of each time loop? For real? Did you figure out why? We tell them that the Nomai used too much power when launching the probe, and what they say back sort of hits home. It's kind of scary how much that sounds like something Slate or Feldspar would do. I'm pretty surprised the Nomai built something that actually broke. Come to think of it though, broke might not be the right word, because it looks like the orbital probe cannon is still firing successfully at the beginning of every loop. I don't know, I might have to disagree with Gabbro on this one. The orbital probe cannon is literally in four different pieces right now. I'd say that would be safe to call broken. Anyway, next up we can tell them that we reached the inside of Statue Island. This is where Gabbro found their memory buddy on the beach, and of course, they just take it all in their stride. So, the Nomai created those head statues to record memories, huh? Yeah, I could see the Nomai doing that. Not sure what for, but it seems like their sort of thing. Do you think the statues are recording our memories then? Cause I remember that one on the beach looked at me funny. That must have been my memory friend. Now, we can get into the more serious stuff with Gabbro. 
Gabbro, my friend, I found the Nomai Mass inside the Ash Twin Projects. You're saying the statues were made so memories could be sent back in time? I guess that makes sense, considering we both have our memories of every loop we've gone through. Wait, then it's just our memories being sent back in time to us, right? Then are we really experiencing multiple time loops or not? That's pretty deep. Maybe our consciousness has been through all of these loops, but maybe our bodies have not, because technically the loops have never happened, meaning that we will receive memories of things that will never have happened to us. Cool, huh? And lastly, we can tell our friend that we found the source of the time loop. Wait, whoa, really? The Nomai carved out the Ash Twin and built a time loop device inside? That is wild. Now we know what's causing the loop then, and if it's caused by a device, that must mean it had to be switched on, right? Huh. Hey, what do you think would happen if you turned off the time loop? Like, there is a part of me that thinks maybe you shouldn't, what with the sun blowing up and all? Then again, who wants to spend eternity being blown up by the sun? Well, I'm no time loop expert. I'm just gonna sit here and ponder the intricacies of time and space. And maybe take a nap, too, if I feel like it. Man, it is really hard not to love Gabbro. Not only are we time buddies, but they're really just an interesting character. Next up, we will visit one of my favorite characters in the game, Chert. Chert actually notices something is going on about halfway through the loop, and we can talk to them about it. We can ask Chert, why are so many stars going supernova lately? And we seem to have hit a nerve with this question, because Chert is on edge. I have no idea. Massive stars go supernova when they reach the end of their lifespans, so it's possible that the stars are older than we realize. Or maybe our models are wrong and they don't live as long as we expected. Honestly, I'm not fond of either option. If our charts are wrong, what else is wrong? And our sun? No, I shouldn't jump to conclusions. I, I, I'm probably overlooking something. That's it. I just need to collect more data. Man, poor Chert. They're so worried about this that when we leave, they try to tell us to watch out for the sand, but accidentally say, watch out for the stars. I, I, I mean, sand. We can talk to them again near the end of the loop, just after the interloper collides with the sun. Before we even say hello, Chert is exclaiming, The stars! They're all dying! There have been too many supernova for it to be anything else! We are next! Do you understand? By Hearth's name, we are next! Their speech has actually gotten us a little worried ourselves, even though we know we're in a time loop. We ask them, what do you mean we're next? It's the stars, you see? All of the stars are dying out. Oh, why did we have to be born at the end of the universe? And our sun, it... The star charts, why? Why did I want to update them so badly? I didn't have to know, but no, oh no, I had to update our star charts. I had to go looking for things I shouldn't have. And now our sun is about to, uh, about to, uh, I don't feel well. I'd like to be alone, please. Despite them having asked us to leave, if we talk to them again, they tell us to come, sit with me, my fellow traveler. Let's sit together and watch the stars die. We only get so much time, don't we? Ah, there was still more I wanted to do. How unlucky to have been born at the end of the universe. I think it's kind of nice that the developers added in a way for us to try to relax Chert. We are able to tell them not to worry. If it helps at all, we're in a time loop, so we won't really die. And they respond by saying, Ah, that's a lovely thought. Is that how you're coping with this? Does it help? A time loop, huh? I like that idea. It's sort of sad that Chert is smart enough to work this all out on their own. Every single loop, this Harthian, our friend, has an existential crisis that really isn't compared to any other with no support. At least we get to help them this once. Just as with Gabbro, we can tell the other venturers what we find during our exploration of the solar system. Hey Chert, I found no my writing about a hidden planet. How fascinating! It might interest you to know the existence of an additional planet is entirely plausible. If you look at the physics of our solar system, it would just have to be incredibly far out there. Farther than Harthian ships would be able to travel. And honestly, we don't know all that much about what's out there. 
The further you go, the less we know. As such, it's well within the realm of possibility that such a planet exists. Most of Church's dialogue relates to the fact that they're an astronomer, so next up is asking them about the mystery body in the solar system. I found no my writing about the quantum moon. Oh yes, everyone loves a good mystery, don't they? Who wouldn't wonder about a moon that's sometimes there and sometimes not? I've observed a quantum moon orbiting each of the five planets, but sometimes it quite simply disappears from the sky altogether. Maybe there's another place it travels to. Unfortunately, if there is, I've never seen it. Perhaps if I take a closer look at these star charts. Hey Chert, speaking of stars, I found no my writing about the sun station. Is that what's in orbit around the sun, then, do you think? This sun station? Quite clever of the Nomai to devise a way to study the sun up close and personal. It must have been tremendously difficult to construct, and hot inside. I can only imagine. I wonder how they were able to travel back and forth from the sun station and the hourglass twins, when the slightest slip-up would have meant a fiery death. And lastly, we can be a big ol' meanie and tell Chert, I found modern Nomai transmissions saying the universe is dying. They take this pretty hard. You... what? I don't... uh... what? You mean to say there are modern Nomai in other parts of space, and they believe the universe, all of it, the whole thing, is dying? Currently? Uh, right now? If that's true, how could I have missed so many signs? The supernova were there, but I... but... I've been studying the stars for... Well, what does it matter if... Uh, I'm sorry, but but I have to look over my charts. I ho hope you don't m mind. Trying to engage with him again gets us the response of... But, but, but surely, I would have seen some other sign than the supernova. So p p perhaps... I sort of wish the developers would have let us comfort them here, too. But that's all I know of for Chert and their unique dialogue with them. Next up is everyone's favorite scaredy cat, Rebic. But Rebic has a lot of entries, so strap in. Hey Rebic, I saw the old settlement. Isn't it amazing? Hard to believe that settlement is still standing, but there it is. It really makes you appreciate living somewhere like Timber Hearth. You know, somewhere that isn't being constantly bombarded with meteors and rocks and stuff. I, I, I cannot agree more, Rebic. Next up is, hey bud, I found the Nomai escape pod on Brittle Hollow. Wow! So then, the Nomai probably came here from somewhere outside of the solar system, and they must have been in trouble when they launched their escape pod, but what kind of trouble? And where did the escape pod come from? I'm so curious. This is an amazing discovery. I hope to find out more about how and why the Nomai arrived here. Next, we can regale Rebic with a description of their mission here. We do this by telling Rebic that we visited the Hanging City. You visited the Hanging City? Was it amazing? Was it beautiful? Was it scary? The Hanging City is where the Nomai settled permanently on Brittle Hollow. It was their most advanced settlement here. Why they chose to build their most advanced settlement so close to a you-know-what is beyond me. Maybe that kind of thing makes sense to a Nomai, though. Maybe they needed the black hole for something. While going through these, I can't help but appreciate how much we can blow Rebic's mind with these discoveries. And the next example is actually a pretty wimpy example of that, but hey Rebic, I saw the Sunless City on Ember Twin. You mean there's another Nomai City inside of Ember Twin? That's incredible! A whole city, and I had no idea it existed? This is great! How did they keep the sand out? If it were me, I'd be nervous about getting buried in the caves by that awful sand. Gosh, the Nomai sure were ingenious, building an entire settlement underground. The Sunless City. Just wow. That means there were two groups of Nomai. One that lived on Ember Twin, and one that lived on Brittle Hollow. But they must have traveled around the entire solar system, since Nomai writing can be found on other planets, too. Now, we can get into the super cool stuff with them. Guess what, Rebic? I found the Nomai Vessel.
You did? That's incredible! Congratulations! That must mean they really were from outside our solar system. I knew it! Yes! But that creates so many new questions. If they didn't come from our solar system, where did they come from? Are they from our galaxy, or somewhere even farther? What were their lives like before they came here, and why did they come here? Hey, I... I might not be much of an astronaut, but I'm really glad I came out here to see the Know My Artifacts for myself. And, um, thanks for telling me. About the vessel, I mean. Jeez, Rebix sounds like me after finishing the game. What? Who? When? Where? And sometimes even why? But, anyway, Rebix, I found Know My writing about the pilgrimage to the quantum moon. A pilgrimage to the quantum moon? The Nomai mentioned the quantum moon in a lot of their writing, so it was clearly special to them, and, um, special enough to make a trip there by themselves. It sounds like a coming-of-age ritual, like how the hatchlings stay hatchlings until their stomachs are strong enough to drink sap wine. Maybe once a Nomai journeyed to the quantum moon, they were considered an adult. Hey, Rebic, I'm glad you're sitting down. I think you need to hear this. I went to the comet, and... Oh, wow. Wow. So that's how the Nomai died. That's really sad, isn't it? I, I know it's a long time ago, but still. Stars above. It's lucky we hadn't evolved to live on land yet. To think, if the comet hadn't have killed them, our species might have coexisted in the solar system. That would have been amazing. But I guess if I hadn't wanted to learn why the Nomai disappeared, I'd never have left Timberhearth and come out here, or had any of these adventures. Don't get me wrong, space is terrifying, but, you know, it has its moments. And now, be prepared to watch a full-on panic attack from a teddy bear, Rebic. Rebic! Oh my god! I talked to a living Nomai! Oh, that, that doesn't make sense. I, I don't understand. I am very excited for you, though. P please stop yelling. What? On the quantum moon, you said? There's a sort of living Nomai on the quantum moon? Well, why didn't you say so? Oh, wow. Wow. This is the best thing that's ever happened in the history of the Outer Wild Ventures. Thank you for saying that. I can't believe you talked to an actual Nomai. Great. So I just have to go back to space, fly to the quantum moon with zero visibility, find a spooky ruin, and travel through a few different types of dangerous terrain to get there. Okay, yeah, that's not so bad. That's probably doable. It's sort of a shame that Rebic never found the time to do the things they dreamed of doing, but I'd like to think that it's pretty meaningful that we got to share our stories with them before they died. The next guest on our tour is the legendary Feldspar themselves. I am honored that they were able to spare some free time out of their schedule of endlessly sitting there by a fire and playing a flute inside of an anglerfish, inside of endless vines and fog, and they just found the time. I am so grateful. But hey, Feldspar, I went to the core of Giant's Deep. So, you figured out the old tornado trick, did you? Good work. I found that bit by accident, but let's keep that between you and me, hey? Hornfells would have had my very handsome head if they knew I'd been riding the cyclones again. The ship is fragile. It can break. You can't subject it to extreme conditions. Not like I was flying the thing into the sun now, was I? And the jellyfish, you figured that out too. Hatchling, I'll tell you what. You've done real well for yourself. You're a fine astronaut, sure, but you... Might just become a pilot yet. Coming from Feldspar, that actually sort of means a lot since they were like the first pilot and all that. But speaking of jellies, Feldspar, I found the frozen jellyfish near your ship. Ha! So the old thing is still there, is it? That's where I first camped out after the crash, you know? It was pretty cozy inside. It does lack the structural integrity and indomitable spirit of a camp made in the shelter of the very bones of the species that tried to eat you, I suppose. But still, very cozy. Oh yeah, by the way, Feldspar, I sort of found a dark bramble seed on Timber Hearth. That's bad business there, Hatchling. As Chert will tell you, if you so much as glance in Dark Bramble's direction, there used to be a fifth planet where the Bramble is now. The infernal plant appeared at the center and kept growing and growing and growing until it shattered the planet and scattered its pieces across space. If we don't get that seed you found sorted real quick like, I suspect Timber Hearth will be headed towards the same fate.
And I tell you what, we Harthians have overcome too much to be done in by some worthless seed. Thanks for making me sound like a cowboy, Feldspar. But agreed. Totally agreed. Wouldn't you say it's much more fitting if, uh, I don't know, totally spitballing here, a supernova took us all out? Anyway, I found writing saying anglerfish are blind. Aha! So the blasted things do have a weakness, meaning my fly as fast as I can approach to dealing with them could have used a bit more thought behind it. Ah well, at least they didn't eat me. All's well that ends well, eh, Hatchling? Indeed it is, Feldspar. And on that note, shouldn't I tell Ground Control to come get you? You've been gone for a while, and everybody's pretty worried about you. I added that last part myself. Well, yeah, sure, whenever you have the time. Frankly, I have kind of like it out here. Quiet, peaceful-ish. You're a little young to understand, but it's a lot of pressure, being the best there ever was. But nice to have a break. I sort of feel like we have surpassed Feldspar in this regard. We should be able to tell them, not to gloat or anything, just so they can relax. Yeah, just to be a good person, not because I want a statue or anything. Anyway, after asking Feldspar if they want to come home, we can actually go tell Hornfels we found them. They're understandably super excited about this. You found Feldspar? And they're in Dark Bramble? Stars above, this is wonderful news. Thank you. Thank you for finding them. That Feldspar didn't immediately join you on your ship and return here is incredibly Feldspar of them. We were never entirely sure what Feldspar was thinking back then either. Still, we ought to fish them out of that dreadful place with all haste. I'll radio Gossen and have them prepare a ship. It really should be Gossen who brings Feldspar home. Again, thank you. You can hardly imagine how profoundly happy I am to hear that they're alive and unharmed. I'm glad to have gotten that stress off the crater's shoulders before the end of things, even if it was only for one loop. But I saved the best encounter for last, in my opinion. A Discord user told me how to have some pretty unique conversations with self, which I'm pretty excited to share with you guys. Since it may be a little confusing, I'm going to be showing a close-up of a screenshot of self when self is talking. And since we're the same person, you know, it's kind of confusing, but that's when self is talking. To get this dialogue, you have to have gotten the hotshot achievement beforehand, and then visit self two loops in a row. Then, when we talk to them, instead of asking about our first loop, we can ask them if we remember landing our ship on the sun station. They get sort of excited from this. They can't help but to exclaim, Yes! I can't believe no one was around to see that. We're probably the best pilot in the space program by now. Yeah, but we've also died more than anyone else. Uh, that's true. I'm not sure how to factor that in. Well, it's not like anyone knows it. Still, it's kind of nice to be able to say it out loud, even if it's just to ourselves. Yeah, I needed to brag about that to someone a little. That's fine. It's kind of nice to hear it said out loud. And just to mess around with ourselves a bit. But, self, did that even technically happen with how time loops work and all? What? Ah, come on. Don't take that away from us. Ah, we're just kidding. I don't care how time works. Ha, <laughs> yeah, me either. Obviously. And there is one little last piece of dialogue Self has that's kind of hidden away. If we are mean to a certain Harthian, we get two of the same options for a dialogue choice while talking to Self. If we ask if they remember about our first solo launch, they respond with, Yeah, that feels like ages ago. We'd have died that first time out if the time loop didn't exist, though. Isn't that weird to think about? And this is where we can hit them with a, Weirder than there being two of us now? For some reason, there's two of the same dialogue choices now, but the second one elicited a unique response. Short and simple. Tough was right. I am the worst. Boom, self-burn. But I kinda have to disagree with self on this one. We are sort of the best in the solar system. We've done everything we could've, shared that knowledge with as many people as we can, and continue to learn from our friends along the way. While playing the game for the first time, I was so lost in the universe and solar system that it rarely occurred to me to talk to the other explorers or even the Harthians at home. I think I was wrong to play the game like that. There is so much to... 
explore that way, and unique dialogue, and most of it is very interesting. I left out a few side characters saying small things like, Hey, what are you doing back from space so soon? Or like, Micah commenting on our RC ship skills, or lack thereof. But even then, this is the longest script I've ever written, and hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed going to talk to all these Harthians again and reading through their dialogue. Thanks to the viewer who suggested making a video of all the dialogue that was sort of hidden or locked away behind certain actions. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking or subscribing to the channel. Subscriptions and watching the video all the way through are really a great way to support a YouTuber, since it lets YouTube know that my content is worth watching and sharing with more people. If you'd like to support the channel more directly, you can give it an applause or click the join button below to become a member. Becoming a member unlocks some perks like badges, special emojis during live streams, special roles in the Lore Explorer Discord, as well as access to my back catalog of live streams on my channel. And you get a special thank you from me in every video, which of course leads me to the thank you of the members here on the channel. We recently hit a milestone of 20 members here. A few people have left since then, but still, that is amazing. Thank you guys so much for showing support and contributing to the growth of the channel. I am forever grateful to you guys. It really does mean a lot. And as always, this is a lore explorer, hoping this video feels like you're just hanging out and talking to your friends. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.